and the PFL is back for the first time in a couple months here from Atlanta, Georgia. PFL 4, your main event, Bren Lofton, Jesus Pinedo. It will be the featherweights and the light heavyweights this Thursday night. Don't know why this is going on on Thursday, but still. You have an interesting card as a bunch of fighters on this card have been popped for performance enhancing drugs at least. That's what we've been told. The list goes Christoph Jotko, um, uh, Daniel Torres, Thiago Santos, Mohamed Fakhardine, uh, Rob Wilkinson, Will Flurry, and yeah, that's it. It's a lot though. And a lot of the big names, especially in the light heavyweight division, have been now popped for PEDs and now a huge opportunity for the light heavyweight division, we are going to talk about that in a moment, but man, the light heavyweight division now completely wide open for anyone, and I mean anyone, to make the playoffs now because it is completely wide open. So you're going to see that in a second, but anyone with a win right now can make the playoffs in the light heavyweight division. It is huge. So the light heavyweights and the featherweights this Thursday night. And folks, also, if you have not yet, though, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below for some more MMA here on the channel. We do Bellator, PFL, and UFC. And speaking of UFC, if you haven't yet, go make sure to check out our UFC 289 predictions, Nunez versus Aldon. A link is in the description down below. Let's now get into this 12 fight PFL card. Okay, I'll keep the two showcase bouts really quick. Uh, the first one being Alexi taking on Akeem Bashir. Alexi's gonna win. He's one of the PFL's guys. He's 2 0 so far in the PFL, winning on the Challenger Series last year and then winning on the PFL uh, 7 playoffs card last year by split decision. Akeem Bashir is a guy who has not fought yet in the PFL. Um, you know, he's been, he fought once in Anthony Pettis FC. That was probably his toughest opponent. He lost. He has not beat a fighter um, in professional MMA yet that has a win. He beat an 0-0 guy in his debut. Makes sense. He lost his second fight in Anthony Pettis FC. Won his third fight um, against fighters 0-3. Then won his next one by a knockout against a guy who's 0-1. I mean, Alexi's a guy who... P the PFL wants to win. He's 22 years old. He's one of their younger fighters. He's the guy, one of the guys they bring up from the Challenger Series that doesn't have too much experience, but they want to keep him around. They want to keep him active. So that's what they do with the showcase fights. So Alexi's going to win this fight. He's going to get it done by decision, I think. I don't think he's going to get a finish. I think the only way that Bashir wins will be by knockout. I don't think he's going to get it. Give me Alexi to win this fight in the opener by unanimous decision. And our second showcase bout is at the featherweight division. We've got Abby Montez, who was in last year's light lightweight um, season, taking on Randy Hester. Hester's making her pro day debut and honestly I can't find anything about this woman on uh, topology she's got no amateur bouts she's got nothing on there except for her picture and where she fights out of Atlanta Georgia she'll take on Ab take on Abby Montez who did not make the cut for the, P the PFL season this year she is famously the fighter who be beat Cl Clarissa Shields in Shields the second MMA fight for the PFL she went on to fight in the PFL season last year dropping two split decisions to Elena Kolesnik and Marina Mohatina they now give her the shot here as a showcase bout this is kind of a in line for her to win I think she'll get the job done here I don't know anything about her opponent but I think all signs point to an Abby Montez victory so I think Montez gets the job done again she just came up just a little bit short in both of her fights last year I think she'll bounce back here with the victory give me, Ab give me Abby Montez to beat Brandy Hester she'll get it done by unanimous decision all right now on to the season fights our first one being a bout in the light heavyweight division Taylor Johnson takes on Andrew Sanchez two fighters who did not fight in the first round of the PFL this year um, of course for Taylor Johnson he won on the Challenger Series beating Trey Williams by first First round TKO. He won the Challenger Series the year before as well, but now he finally gets a shot here with the PFL season. And for Taylor Johnson, he's fought a lot of big time fighters. I mean, he fought Andre Muniz in the Contender Series in 2019. He lost to Johnny Eblen at Bellator 250. He lost to Fabio Aguilar um, at Bellator 265. Taylor Johnson's been around, and now he gets a shot here on the PFL, and he'll be taking on the former UFC fighter in Andrew Sanchez, and it really just depends how much Andrew Sanchez has got left. I'm predicting a Sanchez decision victory in this one. I think he's still got a little bit left in the tank to win this fight, because when you look at what he did in the UFC, he was still fighting good San good fighters, good Sanchez, good fighters when he left the promotion. I mean, you see the fighters that Sanchez lost to, Anthony Smith, Marvin Vittori, Mahmoud Muradov, and Bruno Silva. Those are good fighters he was losing to, and his last fight was at Eagle FC 47. Remember when the when Eagle FC went to the USA? Remember when Eagle FC was around in the first place? Well, anyways, Andrew Sanchez won on that Jorgan de Castro versus Junior Dos Santos card. He beat Gabriel Checo by unanimous decision. We'll see what Sanchez is able to do in this fight against Taylor Johnson. I think it's going to be a good back and forth fight here, but I think in the end, Andrew Sanchez is going to have just enough on the feet to win this fight. And now what I was talking about with the light heavyweight division, this is this thing's wide open. You've got three fighters, Martin Hamlet, Josh Silva, Ty Flores with wins, okay? Hamlin and Silvera both have six points. They are likely, no matter what, going to make the playoffs. Ty Flores is in a really good spot with three points, but other than that, 
everyone's in it because the thing is rob wilkinson popped for roids and the other fighter who won their fight i'm um, at the 205 pound weight division i believe what who's will flurry yes yeah, will flurry he's now who's he's no longer around either because he popped for his drug test as well so there is just it's just wide open in the light heavyweight division we're going to give the decision win to andrew sanchez and just like that he's put himself in the top four of the weight class and as of now he'd be in the playoffs we are going with andrew sanchez to beat tim johnson no sorry not tim johnson taylor johnson to win this fight he's going to get it done by unanimous decision earning three points in the light heavyweight division and this is who i think benefits from both you know will flurry and rob wilkinson dropping out of the pfl season the most impa kasunganai impa kasunganai i think's gonna win this fight against tim karen he's gonna get it done by first round knockout kasunganai is way better than karen is i'm just gonna keep it a buck with you kasunganai is good this is a guy who should not have been dropped from the UFC. He was fighting at a welterweight in the UFC. He's now fighting at 205 pounds. I think for Kasunganai, it was more of a thing. He just wanted to get on the season. He wanted to be on, on the PFL season this year. And he found the easiest way to get on was going to be through 205 pounds. This is not Kasunganai's weight class. His weight class, I think, is middleweight. That's where Kasunganai should be fighting. And I think, you know, in the future, that's where he will be fighting. As of now, though, Kasunganai is at 205 pounds, and it makes sense because the 205 weight class is a lot less stacked at the PFL than, I mean, you know, again, they don't have middle middleweight, so it would have been welterweight for them. And rather than cutting down to 170 pounds in that stacked and loaded weight class that they do have, it makes way more sense for them just to fight at 205. Now, again, I think when the PFL is out the system where they're only doing seasons and when they we're assuming by Bellator and, you know, fighters can fight either this season or just in the super fight promotion, super fight league, or with the Bellator brand, I guess. And that's where Kasang and I will go. But for now, Kasang and I gets to fight at 205 pounds. And I think this is all just a test run for Kasang and I really. And just, you know, we'll see how far he goes. He gets Tim Karen. This is a guy he should be. Tim Karen. I mean, you know, 13 and five, he's won three straight fights, but against guys just in random promotions. Um, he won a fight by DQ against Alton Cunningham. You know, before that three fight winning streak, he lost three in a row. Um, you know, he's just back and forth wins and losses for him. He just has not been consistent. And Tim Karen has only been knocked out once, but I think this will be the second. You see the power Kasang and I possesses at 205 pounds right now. You saw what he did in the Challenger Series against Osama. In his last fight, he beats Corey Hendricks by decision, but he get, picks up the win. Now, it wasn't in the PFL season, which sucks, because if it was for Kasang and I, he would basically be in an automatic place to, pick, to make the playoffs. However, it's not. And now Kasang and I really need to finish to, win the, to get in the playoffs and move on. But I think the way this is set up, as long as Kasang and I can get a finish, he'll likely be in the postseason. And I think that's what happens here. I think Kasang and I blitz, blitzes Tim Karen. Karen cannot keep up with the power that Kasang and I possesses. And Impa Kasang and I picks up six points. And just like that, that places him in third place in the PFL light heavyweight standings. Give me Impa Kasang and I to win and put himself in a really good position to make the playoffs. Kasang and I by first round knockout. Next up, a fight that honestly probably doesn't have too many postseason implications with it. You've got Chris Wade taking on Hyoji Kudo. This is why, I mean, in the featherweight division, you've got four fighters who have points on the board. Brendan Lofnane, Bubba Jenkins, Wilfred Habilov, and Gabriel Braga. Then you've got everyone else with zero. But the thing is, you know, only unless all four of those fighters lose or, you know, you need one of those fighters to lose, right? But then you're break, break, breaking it down on tiebreakers. It's going to be tough for the winner of this fight. And considering PFL kind of gave the four guys in the playoffs some easy opponents we're going to talk about in a second. But those four guys are fighting guys who I think they can easily beat. So it's just going to be tough for the winner of Chris, Chris Wade and Hyoji Kudo to advance the playoffs. However, there's still alternate, alter, alternates in the PFL season. And if you can win this fight, then you probably put yourself in fifth place. And it's a big win for either guy. It's going to be Chris Wade. I don't think Hyoji Kudo is all that good. I think he got really lucky knocking out Alejandro Flores. He just caught him with a big shot. And really, I don't think that, um, I don't think Kudo's all that great. I think he just got, again, he got caught. You know, he knocks out Flores, and oh, by the way, if you get a knockout in the first round, you you go to the playoffs. So he went to the playoffs. He got submitted by Bubba Jenkins in the first round. Then he goes on to the first fight this year, loses to Habilev. That's what's going to happen, though. Movi Habilev is so good. He loses by decision. And then Chris Wade, you know, his first fight, I thought, it was, you know, I thought it could have gone either way. Him and Bubba Jenkins, I like both guys. I picked Chris Wade to win. Jenkins went in there, and it was able to pick up the victory. And now Chris Wade, again, a guy who was in the PFL, um, the playoffs last year was a big favorite. He was the one seed against Brendan Lofton, and he lost. Um, now Chris Wade's fighting himself in a position where he likely, I don't think, will advance. He needs a big time result to advance here. Um, you know, it's kind of similar to what I guess Lance Party Palmer was, you know, had last year, and Lance Party Palmer will be fighting an ACA in August. We'll see what's going to happen for him. Um, 
But yeah, Chris Wade, I think he's going to be able to go in here and win. I think he's all around just better. Better striking, better grappling. I think as long as he doesn't get caught with a big shot by Kudo, he should win. So give me Chris Wade to win by unanimous decision. So something crazy is that Ty Flores, with one and win in the PFL season this year by decision against Delon Monti, has put himself in an incredible position to make the playoffs. And he's, you know... Undergone, undergone so many, you know, opponent changes so far this season. He's supposed, he's supposed to get Christoph Jotko in this fight, in his second fight of the year. Fight got canceled, so then he gets Rob Wilkinson, but both those guys pop for, for PEDs. So down goes Jotko, down goes Wilkinson. He will now move on to Dan the Dragon Spawn, a guy who fought in the PFL in 2018, who lost to the future champion in 2018. Of course, at the heavyweight division in Sean O'Connell. Spawn was a minus 440 favorite in that fight against Sean O'Connell. He loses, and O'Connell goes on to win the PFL season that year. You know, he's a huge underdog that year, O'Connell. He goes on to win the entire thing, the first light heavyweight champion for the PFL. Now, Dan Spawn comes back in 2019. He loses his first fight, doesn't end up getting the second fight. Then he goes on in 2021, fights two fights, loses to Martin Hamlin in his first fight, then has a draw against Emiliano Sordi, not booked with the PFL since. Um, fights one fight against uh, Daquan Townsend, former UFC fighter at Ohio Combat League in 2022. Had a bare knuckle fight against Chris Camozzi, loses by knockout in the first round and here you go two months later less than two months later he gets ty flores um i don't like that spawns coming back on such short notice short notice too i think he's obviously taking the opportunity well for the pfl season this year um i, I wouldn't be surprised if ty flores gets a knockout here i'll be honest with you i wouldn't be surprised at all i think there's a very good chance ty flores goes out here and gets a knockout i think ty flores is just all around better than dan spawn and oh by the way dan spawn just got knocked out a couple months ago less than two months ago it's just a big opportunity here for ty flores i think flores is gonna win by decision it wouldn't surprise me all, at all though if he gets a late finish here i think i think it's definitely possible again all ty flores wins needs is a victory really actually mm, kind of he needs a victory a straight up decision though if he gets six points and the way the pfl works ty flores is at two and oh is still at, and at six points with two decisions would put him lower in the standings than input kasanganai with one finish and one fight one and no knockout but that also means the only guy with one other fight so far in the PFL season, so it shouldn't really concern Ty Flores is Sam Key, but Key, K, whatever, however you say his name, if he gets a first round knockout and he's one and one, he still has more points than Ty Flores would with three points or six points with two round, two first or two uh, unanimous decision victories. It's fine. I think Ty Flores is going to be okay as we look at the, you know, the way this season's looking. Ty Flores is probably going to be okay with just two decision victories. I think that's what's going to happen here. I wouldn't be surprised with the late finish, but I, get, but I think Ty Flores wins, and I think we get it done by unanimous decision, having six points in the PFL season. And for now, be in fourth place in the PFL standings, it'll be Hamlet, Silvera, Kasunganai, and Flores for now. We'll see how it plays out. Next up in the featherweight division, we have got Marlon Moraes taking on Gabriel Braga here in this one. You know, Marlon's in a spot where he just needs to win a fight. I don't care if it's a season or not. He's got to win a fight. Now, likely, if Marlon Moraes loses this fight, this will be the end of his career. He is on a huge losing streak. He is on a six-fight losing streak. In all six of those fights, he's been knocked out or TKO'd. Not good. Not good, not good, not good. Now, his last fight didn't get knocked out. He just got finished by leg kicks by Brent Lofnane. Now, I think in Marlon Moraes' original fight, um, you know, um, his original fight was supposed to be Alejandro Flores. I think that was a fight that he was, you know, could definitely be able to win. Flores withdraws. Now Gabriel Braga re-enters. Now, Gabriel Braga beat Jesus Pinedo in his first fight by split decision. Jesus Pinedo is a guy who's in the main event of this card. Now, even with the win, Braga was an alternate going into that fight. He remains an alternate and Alejandro Flores and whoever originally didn't was supposed to fight. Um, I don't know who was really supposed to fight. Uh, Jesus Pinedo, I can check, but it was Sung Bin Joe. Sung Bin Joe re-enters the PFL season and Braga returns to an alternate. If Braga's three points from that split decision was still enough to make the playoffs, he'd go into the playoffs. It's just the weird way the PFL works. However, Braga re-enters as an alternate because of the injury of Alejandro Flores, or maybe, I don't know, I don't think it was, I think it was an injury from Flores. I don't think it was a drug test, but now Braga's back in the season and he gets himself a Marlon Moraes fight. It's a huge reward fight for Braga considering huge name and big result if he can pick up the victory. I think he's going to, because Moraes, again, I say this every time he fights, his skill's not down. He's he still got the skills to be a great fighter. He doesn't have the chin to be a great fighter. And Braga's gonna crack him here. If it's not in the first round, it's gonna be in the second. That's where I'm gonna have him pick. I, again, Marlon Moraes is on a six fight losing streak and he's been finishing every single one of them. I mean, it's not good. Santagin, Font, Divashwali, Song, uh, Moraes, Lofnane. He has been finished in every fight. 
He's going to get finished again. Gabriel Braga wins. He'll pick up five points in the featherweight division. And with this win, it's huge for him because now he'll have eight points. And with this victory for now, Braga is in first place in the featherweight division with eight points. He'll pick up the win by first round knockout or second round knockout, excuse me. Next up, Josh Silvera gets Delon Monti in a fight where, again, Silvera is kind of in a really good position to make the playoffs already, but especially a win and especially a win by finish would cement his, his spot in the PFL playoffs this year. And Silvera, again, was a playoff fighter last season, lost to Omar Yakhmedov by decision. Now he moves on it to this year. He beat Sam Kay in his first fight and Sam Kay is not very good. So he submitted him in the first round. He's my 600 favorite in that one. We're going to see Sam Kay later in a fight where I mean, the same outcome is probably going to result. Silvera now gets Delon Monti. It's a, kind of a tougher fight, for, but for Delon Monti, one and three in the PFL, he lost his first fight to shoe face Carlos Antonio Carlos Jr. Um, last season, but then beats Emiliano Sordi by knockout in the first round in 92 seconds, makes it to the playoffs, loses to Wilkinson, and then his first fight in 2023 drops one to Ty Flores. Different style of fighting this one with Silvera. Silvera, decent striker, but a really good wrestler and a really good jiu-jitsu practitioner. Silvera's going to take this fight down, and he's not going to waste any time. I think this one's going to be really short. I think Silvera is going to go right in there. I think he's going to get a finish. We're going to see. I mean, basically, I think I'll break it to you. I think the Sam Key and, uh, and you know, Marty Hamlet fight's probably going to be really quick, and it's probably going to be a first-round finish. So it's basically, I think, depending on who's going to get the finish first. Um, in, in terms of tiebreaker for the number one seed, I think... I think Silvera is going to get it done in a pretty fast order, but I don't know if it's going to be faster than what Hamlet does against Key. However, Silvera is going to go in here. He's going to win. He's going to submit uh, Delon Monti in the first round. He's going to take him down, fish for a submission. He's probably going to get it. Give me Silvera by first round submission. And for now, it places him in first place in the light heavyweight division. Currently, we have Silvera now in first place with 12 points. We have got Martin Hamlet, who has not fought yet with six points. Then we have got Impa Kasanganai in, three, in third place with six points. And then we've got Ty Flores in fourth place with six points. So give me Silvera by first round submission. And for now, placing him in first place place here in the PFL Light Heavyweight Division. So this is what I'm talking about earlier as the PFL has kind of placed all four of their current playoff fighters at featherweight in really good positions to win fights and you know, assuming that the other fighters um, are really assuming that either Marla Morais, Chris Wade, or Hyoji Kudo doesn't get a finish, all four of the featherweight fighters will likely stay in their spots to make the playoffs because the only guy who got to finish in the featherweight division was Brendan Lofton, so it's kind of wide open, but still, we now have Bubba Jenkins taking on Sung Bin Joe. The bad man in Bubba Jenkins really showed out in his victory against Chris Wade, and Jenkins really cemented himself as one of the better guys that PFL does have in the featherweight division, especially with the win over last year's playoff fighter in Chris Wade. He'll now get Sung Bin Joe, a guy in Sung Bin Joe who was originally scheduled for Jesus Pinedo. Uh, Sung Bin Joe is not medically cleared to compete for that fight. We will see if he's medically clear, cleared to compete against Jenkins. Um, again, it was an interesting signing because he had lost two of his last three. He won his last fight in Gladiator in Osaka for the vacant featherweight championship. And his last fight by knockdown in the first round, but lost two straight fights before that to Daniel Tamor and to Tyler Diamond before that. And Tyler Diamond's a guy we're going to be talking about later in the co made event against Habilev. But I just, it was interesting because Sung Bin Joe, again, you know, he's been losing and they put him back in the PFL season. He is going to get wrestled really bad in this fight. Bubba Jenkins is going to wrestle him throughout the entire thing. He's probably not going to let Sung Bin Joe back up. It is going to be, you know, a, a wear out process here where Bubba Jenkins takes down Sung Bin Joe and holds him down and can, you know, back and forth, back and forth, mix it up with the striking. It's going to be an all around really good performance here for ba Bubba Badman Jenkins in this fight. He's going to win it by decision. Bubba Jenkins goes to 2-0 in the featherweight division. He will have six points. As for now, puts him in second place as Gabriel Braga is in first with eight points. In second place, we'll have Bubba Jenkins with six, then Lofton, then Hobby Love. But again, all can change. Give me Bubba Jenkins for now to beat Sung Bin Joe by unanimous decision. Let's just keep this short. This won't take long. Martin Hamlet taking on Sam K here. Sam K shouldn't be in the PFL. We've talked about this before. I just don't think he is worthy to be in a big promotion like the PFL, at least right now. I mean, the guy's, you know, I don't even know how old he is. They don't even have his birthday on uh, Tapology. He's eight and seven. He's a 50-50 fighter. He's a journeyman fighter. He shouldn't be here. Uh, you know, he's lost two fights in the PFL so far. He was in the heavyweight tournament last year, lost against Juan Adams in a fight where the winner was going to make the playoffs. Adams beat him by knocking on the five in the second round, earning five points. K came back this year, lost to Josh Silvera in the first round. He's not a very good striker. He gets beat on the feet, and then he's even worse on the ground. Silvera just dominated him. Same is going to be said about Martin Hamlet. Hamlet's not going to have any trouble here. And I think Hamlet's going to get a finish quicker than what Josh Silvera is going to get against Delon Monti in the first round. It's going to be another first round submission for Martin Hamlet. And now he'll be the one seed going into the PFL playoffs. So as for now, again, I just don't think it's going to be close. Hamlet's first fight in the PFL was against Mohamed Fakhardin. He submitted him in 95 seconds or 65 seconds. This one's not even going to be close. Martin Hamlet's going to go balls to the wall, and he's going to finish Sam K. 
and he'll be in first place. So Hamlin will have 12 points in first place. Silvera will have 12 points in second place. In third place, we will have Impa Kasanganai. And in fourth place, we will have, um, of course, Ty Flores. So that will do it for the PFL's light heavyweight division. The next two fights are at 145. So the PFL's 205 weight class will be the one seed of Martin Hamlet taking on the four seed in Ty Flores and the two seed in Josh Silvera taking on the three seed, Impa Kasanganai. That's how I have the light heavyweights playing out on to the final two featherweight fights. Again, like we said earlier, again, the, the featherweights who are curling the playoffs are in a great spot to make the playoffs. Movli Habliev taken on Tyler Diamond. Habliev's going to win this fight. He was really scheduling against Daniel Torres. Torres failed his drug test, so here comes Tyler Diamond. He's been in the PFL before. He fought twice with the PFL last season. Won his first fight against Sung Bin Joe, or sorry, two years ago. Won his first fight against Sung Bin Joe, and then lost to Brendan Lofton in his second fight. Did not fight in 2022 for Tyler Diamond. I don't know where he's been, but now he's back with the PFL. Um, this is a guy, again, who fought on the Ultimate Fighter, made it to the finale, lost to Bryce Mitchell. The, P the UFC did not sign him. He won back-to-back -back fights in LFA and Pure Combat, and the PFL signed him. He's 1-1 one one in the PFL, and I don't think Tyler Diamond's all that bad. I really don't think he is. I think this is a guy fighting at a Team Alpha Male in Sacramento, California, who's a good fighter who deserves to be in the PFL. It's just the problem is he's fighting Movli and Habilev, a guy who's not lost so far. Um, he's 20-0-1, oh, and, and he is a problem in the PFL's featherweight division. We will see if he's able to win the entire thing like he did in 2021, but for now, I think Habilev's going to be Tyler Diamond. It's going to be a decision victory. It's just going to be all around Hobby Love domina domination here. Again, Diamond, especially on short notice, Hobby Love's going to win this fight. He's going to have six points in the featherweight division. Currently placing him, I believe, in third place because, yeah, we have first place Braga. Or no, sorry, yeah, we have first place Braga, uh, Jenkins in second, Lof or, yeah, Hobby Love in third, Lofnane in last. Lofney at this point would have already clinched a playoff spot as long as he doesn't get finished in the first round. But for now, we'll talk about Lofney and Hobby Love, though, clinching his spot in the playoffs with this victory. Main event time, Brent Lofnane taking on Jesus Pinedo. Lofnane just needs a victory to advance to the playoffs or he just needs to not get finished within, oh, uh, you know, a round and a half and he'll be fine, he'll be in the playoffs. He's gonna beat Jesus Pinedo. Uh, Jesus Pinedo is not very good. This guy lost to Braga in his last fight with split decision. He's a Peruvian fighter, he's 26 years old. He's young, you know, he fought in the UFC once, lost to John McDessie back in 2019. He's just young. Lofnane's better at this point of his career. Lofnane is really hitting his stride, and I think Lofnane's truly a really good fighter that the PFL has got. I think I'm the featherweight division is really good for the PFL, um, and I think there's some interesting matchups going into the in the playoffs. But the real big one's going to be a Habula versus Lofnane. That's the, that's going to be the big matchup. And right now, the way I have it, Lofnane winning by second round TKO, that creates a matchup between Lofnane and Habula in the first round because Bubba Jenkins will be the three seed. I, I don't know how the tiebreakers work, but for now, the PFL's got Jenkins slotted ahead of Habula, so I, I would assume that's how it will remain. Jenkins will be in third place. Second place will be Gabriel Braga. First place will be Brendan Lofnane. Fourth place will be Movli Habilev. There's your there's your first round of the playoffs. It's huge. Because, I mean, Lofnane and Habilev is the biggest fight the PFL can put on. Jenkins Braga, all fairness, isn't really a big fight that I think Jenkins will kind of win. And then you'll get Jenkins either rematch against Brendan Lofnane or you'll see if Bubba Jenkins can take down Movli Habilev. But in this fight, this is all Brent Lofnane. Lofnane's got better striking. He's going to touch up Jesus Pinedo. And again, Pinedo, I think, is just too young at this point of his career to beat a guy like Brent Lofnane, who, again, is 33 years old, the face, really, of the PFL. This guy's going to win by second round TKO, and he's going to advance to the playoffs. So again, Lofnane's going to have 10 points, and he'll be in first place. He'll be the one seed, but I think he's going to get probably the toughest fight and the guy nobody wants to fight in Movlid Habulev in the first round. My goodness, what a fight. But yeah, Lofnane's going to win. I think he's got better striking. You saw what he's able to do to, to Marlon Moraes. You've seen what he's able to do to Bubba Jenkins before in the past. Lofnane's good. He's going to beat Jesus Pinedo. Pinedo is just, just, at this point of his career, just not in the right spot to be here. I think, again, he needs time. This is not the fight for him in the main event against Lofnane. Lofnane wins and advances. So, folks, thank you all for watching our PFL 4 predictions here on the channel. Make sure to hit, to hit that subscribe button down below if you did enjoy the video. Make sure to leave a like if you did enjoy as well. And also make sure to leave a comment if you do disagree with any of the picks. And make sure to go check out our UFC 289 predictions also on the channel as well. So, folks, thank you all for watching. And Mamba forever.